And good evening and welcome to the Jackson Christian Eagles show. The show that brings you the thrill of victory and no agony of defeat. The most electrifying show in sports talk around here. And we have got a good crew tonight of fans. The Jackson Christian fans went nuts. You could see the momentum change with 11 seconds to go in the contest. And we're going to talk about that excitement much more. We've got all kinds of great guests and the, before we go any further, I've had numerous texts. And, yes, the other <laughs> night was a Pepto-Bismol game, and it was an ultra game. And I'm going to award the head coach the Pepto-Bismol <laughs> award for the coach's office. And I got that go. from – I had to bring my coach, Richard Ross, either Pepto-Bismol or Maalox after every ball game, <laughs> and it's a tradition. My starting guest, you know the guys, Coach Brian Bullard, who is co-host with me, and he's going to work basketball with me too. But the man with the plan, the tower of power, the man is too sweet to be soured. Darby Palmer is here with us. Coaches, I'm excited. Now, I'll be honest with you, I used some Pepto-Bismol <laughs> Friday night. Well, I think we, we could have used some too on the sidelines, but our, our guys did a great job. Uh, battling with TCA. We knew going into the game, TCA is a well-coached team. Um, they have great players out on the edge, um, and they did a really good job. Um, and our guys at halftime, we challenged them to not flinch, but just to continue to buy into our program and what it's all about, and uh, we were able to finish the job. Got to ask you all, you're, you're normal people, even though some people think coaches aren't. Well, stomach turns over a couple of times. You know your kids can do it. They believe they can do it, but there's still a few butterflies running loose. Yeah, absolutely. There's always a few butterflies, um, but our guys were bought in from the get-go, and then they never flinched at all. I know Coach Reichard, when you can ask him, um, even on the sideline after TCA scored to go up by one, uh, I think we had, what, 50-something seconds left, uh, and he was gathering the offense up and said, hey, do you guys believe in? All of them looked him in the eyes and said, absolutely, we're about to go score. So there's that undying belief of, yeah, we're, we're going to get the job done. We're going to go yeah. and finish it. 57 seconds, and we have a, two running plays that were the right calls because we got a first down off both of them. That stops the clock. And it were great calls there. We had a pass that got out of bounds. Even when Jalen had a, sm a small gain because they played it well, he got out of bounds and stopped the clock for us. And then we had the – Situation at 23 seconds, we had one. Then we got it down to, I believe, the ball was snapped with either 16 or 17. And Lance Rowland uses Gorilla Glue in his hands. <laughs> and Kat, no, the man's got – evidently he's got the, the hands because this is the third one of those catches he's made. Two almost at the same spot in different games. And then one at our house in the left back corner of the end zone. He likes that back corner of the end zone. <laughs> yes, he does. And, you know, early on Lance battled with, with an injury. Yes. Uh, and he worked uh, to get back to get back to this opportunity, these moments. Um, and an outstanding young man, uh, his work ethic and what he's able to do for us, he did a really good job. Well, I also want a drink of water, of what era, water, Gatorade, whatever it was. Chilton Smith in the second half, now he played a good first half. He was a holy terror in the second half. He was everywhere. Uh, he, he introduced himself to him quite often. <laughs> he did, and, and Chilton – uh, was one of the guys that, that we challenged uh, at the beginning of the week to get back to uh, playing his brand of football. And, and Coach mentioned that Lance battled an injury. Over the summer, um, I believe it was our – maybe it was our spring game. Spring game. Uh, Chill went down with a knee injury. And one of those that uh, nothing structurally wrong, just had to uh, take some time off and rehab it. Um, and, and so he's been, he's been battling that as well as just being really comfortable on that knee. And he played – uh, Friday night with that reckless abandon that that he played with the previous three years, and he and he and Caleb, I know they put up a lot of points. Uh, Trinity did, and, and tip your hat to them. But those guys uh, did what we asked them to do. Were physical, and every run that they had on the ground, every yard they gained on the ground, they had to work for it. Um, and and those guys, and we, we'll talk to Chill here in a little bit. But man, what a what a great job by him and um, our defensive line. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Our offensive line, I thought, got better as the game went on. We had some nice crisp blocks, and we did leave a fumble on the ground. But when, you know, the discipline thing I'm always talking about, doing the right thing when you have to do it, 
they did a pretty good job of that. There was only one semi miss block. We only got a piece of a guy. Somebody jumped in there, teamwork, and picked up that block, and we had a good run by Cam. All he needs is a little space, yep. and they gave it to him. We protected Gage on that last drive quite well. Yes, sir, and absolutely. And going back to what you said earlier about 50-something seconds left, having to drive down the field, we practice that every Thursday in our two-minute offense, being able to get out of bounds, how we execute in those type of situations. And our guys were able to do a great job. But even further point to that was you want to win the middle eight in a game. And that drive to kick that field goal to go up at halftime was huge because not only we won that the last four minutes of the, of the first half, but also coming out of halftime, we won the first four minutes because we were able to get that um, three and out by them. And then we were able to go score again. So. That owning that middle eight in the game is huge. Well, Zach Cisco is another great weapon. I believe he what put four of his six kicks into the end zone, mm-hmm. and uh, that pins them back. And uh, they got to start from their twenty, and we know how that is because we got pinned some because the wind and folks don't realize it. The pass catchers, the throwers, the kickers, they had to deal with a pretty stiff wind at times. Yeah. And it, but great effort, coach. I know you're proud of some of your guys, not just Tilton, but I do have to mention him a second time. But uh, we got after him, uh, their quarterback, who is a very good one. He's a mobile quarterback. Yeah. And and we never uh, – I don't know that we got to him. I don't know that we sacked him. Uh, but there was some, some pressure that we put on him, and he did a good job getting rid of the football. Um, he did a good job. They, they would um, – kind of timely when he would keep the ball himself and run. I mean, you that was an offense where you felt like it was run, 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 but then they would hit you with the, the pass, and they kept us off balance, and, and they did a good job. And as as Coach Palmer talked to, to Coach Butler after the game, it, we have a lot of respect for that guy and that, that program. And um, he, he just – no matter what, what they have on the field, he, he does a great job with it. And uh, tip your hat to them, and, and they're going to go and – and maybe surprise some teams in the playoffs with that offense. And, and so, you they know. could, especially yeah. with Tompkins, their running back. I'll yeah. give the kid credit, to be honest with you. He reminds me of a young but slightly bigger Cam Boyd when he was young because this young man's a freshman. And I know a lot of people, and I hope you all don't mind me admit, the young man from USJ Finch is very good. I think that, like Cam, the young man from TCA is going to take it to the limit before he graduates, and I'm glad I don't have to tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> Our guys kind of it, – it seemed that we settled in tackling him as the game went on. At first, um, he was kind of running through us a little bit and, and pulling us. He always fell forward, and, and that's a sign of a good back. Um, and but our guys, we figured out we got to run our feet, we got to tackle low, we got a gang tackle, um, and I think he had 35 carries. Uh, so they they worked him pretty hard, and uh, I think around 160 yards. And so you felt like he had just a ton of yards, but he had to earn all those. Um, and then he had to turn around and uh, play defense. And he he's got guys pulling and kicking him all night. And you mentioned something earlier about those offensive linemen. Four of those guys play one way. And so you look in the third and fourth quarter, and those guys are jumping around and high fiving and doing whatever they do. And some of those defensive linemen have turned have played offense, and so it, it's an advantage for us to be able to keep those guys mostly uh, to one side of the ball. We did use Dalton um, a little bit and tie a little bit on defense as the year as we get closer to the playoffs. We want those best eleven out there as much as we can. So that's a big thing for our offensive line to be able to be fresh. Um, they're going into the, the fourth, third and fourth quarter. And you, you get some good backup. I mean, I know Chilton can come in. But yep. He uh, he does when he's needed, concentrates on that defense. Get a, You get a few snaps out of Tristan Nash. And mm-hmm. uh, there's some other guys. Well, that even Kyle Christian has, yeah. has done an outstanding job. Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you for whatever you want to say. I know the fans are hanging on your every word. We're excited. No, they really are. I get mm-hmm. comments. I love it when Darby leads the show off. So, it's your turn. Well, like we already mentioned, uh, our guys did a great job uh, battling with TCA. We know any time that we play in-town teams, it could go either way. You kind of throw the records out, uh, and it's going to be a battle. Um, and we're proud of our guys, proud of – what they had to overcome in that game, like we already hit on in a halftime locker room, addressing with our guys, hey, championship-level cultures. Hey, they don't flinch. They don't back down. Um, and that's what we expect out of our guys. And whatever situation they were in on Friday night, 
Um, they didn't flinch. They didn't back down. They rose to the occasion, and we were able to come out with a win. We know this week is going to be a, another tough opponent in Fade Academy. Coach Odom does a really good job uh, with his program offensively. They're going to get in about 100 million formations and try to outflank you uh, with the G play, with buck sweep, running the quarterback. Um, and so we got to be prepared. we got to be able to talk and alignment and assignment football. Yeah. You hear that a ton defensively, alignment and assignment. So getting aligned properly, going through our checks. Uh, defensively, they're, they're a 3-4 team. They look to play man. They're going to blitz some. Um, different defenses that we've seen the past two weeks. So we just got to be prepared and, and play our brand of football up to our standard. And, and they, that's what we hit on. They've got a young man, I believe his name is Wyatt. I his last name's K. But bowling the quarterback does worry people. These type of kids you can have nightmares over. Usually they're leading rusher besides mm-hmm. a very good passer. Absolutely. And, and he's a he's a younger player. Um, so he, he's got a, a bright fruit future, especially at Fade Academy. But Coach Holdem does a great job getting numbers in the quarterback run game. Does a good job. Absolutely, unless you want to say something about the playoffs. Coach Bull and I will cover the scenarios and the options. Cause folks, Let's y'all cover that. <laughs> we want you to get out to our ball game Friday night. First of all, it's senior night. Secondly, we got all kinds of activities going. The youngest cheerleaders are going to be there besides our regular ones. Other things that Coach will tell you about a little later, Coach Buller will. But please get out there and support your Eagles. You can even watch the game on your phone. You can get Jackson Christian's Facebook. We've got great internet for that at Jackson Christian, unless JEA lets us down on that. And I'll take a shot at them about the <laughs> internet problems at Jackson Christian are not the school's problems. That's right. Uh, they're kind of, I call them inherited problems. But I'm going to tell you what, what we're going to do is we're going to take a time out. We're going to get excited. The uh, steak wrap is the – uh, sandwich of the day. I wanted to call it soup. I got soup on my mind tonight. It's like soup weather outside. Right it, now. it is soup weather. We're enjoying it. Coach is already eating. Um, we got all kinds of people here. If you've missed this show, shame on you. Come to Hub City Deli. We'll be back with more Jackson Christian Eagle football and talk. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. And we are back here. I was checking the board out when we came back. The soups today are vegetable beef, which is very good. The brisket chili is good, but uh, I'm 71 years old, and I can't eat chili anymore because it burned. But it is good. I slept one day, ate it, enjoyed every second of it. But sometimes the old folks' stomachs like mine are a little lightweight. Now, again, we just get better and better and better. It's kind of like uh, there was a president that said we're going to keep winning and winning and winning. Well, it gets the guests get better and better and better. We've got Coach Will Reichard, the man that must have the nerves of steel. And uh, I don't know, his human computer is ten times better than any Dell computer, anything like that. He makes some tough play calls, and I'm proud of him. Coach Bull, I'm going to let you start it with Coach Reichard. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's go through some of these numbers, and you've got them there in front of you. Uh, let's start with Cam Boyd on the ground, 23 rushes, career high, uh, 268 yards, two touchdowns, 13th career, 100-yard rushing game. Um, that gives him almost 1,200 on the season with 17 total touchdowns. Gage had a really good night, 12 of 17, 183 yards, two touchdowns. Jay, nine rushes for 114 and a touchdown and added eight receptions for 106 yards. Um, and, and that gives him – uh, over a thousand career, both res- rushing and excuse me, rushing and receiving. Talk about each one of these guys and, and their contributions Friday night. Well, I'll start with Cam. Um, what you're seeing is a guy who's just running fearless right now. Um, he is just so comfortable in our system and, and what we ask him to do. Um, uh, you saw it on that two minute drill to end the game. You call two run plays. Um, I think a lot of people look at that and say that's that's crazy, but. That's our best play. Get, well, you get, had get, first down, so stop exactly. the clock. That's you didn't have to waste a time out there. Mm-hmm. And when you have when you have a ball carrier like that, you have full confidence that he's going to go out and make a play. 
Um, it, it makes my job pretty easy, actually. Um, same thing with, with Jay. Um, some of the stuff he does on the field, it, it's unnatural. The way he glides, the way he's patient. Um, the, the way he glides and the way he runs um, is it, pretty impressive. Um, and I could just go on and on with what Jay does on the field um, and how he works in practice. Um, Gage, I thought, did a really good job. I'm good? Yeah, I, got you. I was going to try to give you a little extra gain, but he's good now, Gary. All right, good. Um, Gage, I was just so proud of him. Um, a, some of the throws he made, obviously, the play at the end, but I told him after the game what I was most impressed with was just his composure um, on that last drive at the end of the game. He was calm. He was getting guys lined up. There was not an ounce of panic or fear in his eyes. He knew the job he had to do, and he did a great job executing and leading us in that last-minute drive. Because i got to ask Coach Reichert about the progression. Sometimes you will assign a receiver and go to him or either carry the ball. But I felt like, and I may have read it wrong, and Darby helped me with a couple of things. I saw him look at his first receiver who was covered like white on rice. Oh, absolutely. He actually checked a second receiver, although Lance was actually an earlier option. But he checked another receiver. He gave a look, and evidently that must have frozen the safety because that was my next question in off-air. Coach Palmer told me about that. He hit the what really turned into the third one, and of course it happens to be a glue-handed guy that uses gorilla, and I'm joking when I say he has gorilla glue on his hands. Absolutely. Um, you're right. We, we were. I was thinking in my head that that play was going to go to the slot receiver, which would yep. be Banky. We had run it earlier in the night, um, and we had our slot receiver running open down the middle of the field. Um, and Trinity's in, in kind of a tough spot right there because they're playing to not give up the easy field goal, right? So we were hoping we could catch him in a little bit tighter coverage and maybe get somebody passed. Um, but our slot receiver got hung up on a jam. He was covered. Um, but Gage did a great job checking to his next option and throwing a ball to Lance, and Lance going up and getting it like he does. And a young man from TCA covered Lance about as good as you could cover him. Not Lance, good enough, though, Not good <laughs> enough. Well, Columbia Academy would tell you the same thing. Oh, exactly. At the end of that half, and then one of our home games, uh, and I, it was either the – Tipton Rosemark or the Harding, he had one of those great catches, though, in the corner of the other oh, end zone, left corner. And But it doesn't happen without our offensive line actually got better. Coach pointed out something I like. Our kids, we only play one of them a whole lot on defense, and we can sub in and give them some rest on offensive line. They were fresh, and they did the job. Uh, they got the push. They also got the stalemates that – engages the rifleman in basketball and i'm gonna have to call him the rifleman now in football absolutely absolutely our offensive line um they're they're like robots and i say that in a in a good way um we don't have tons of run plays coaches they it's very repetitive they do the same thing over and over again but i think we could have played for five hours friday night and they would have kept going out there and doing their job doing their job doing their job um they're, they're pretty relentless in in how they approach the game and you're right, you can't say enough about Gage. Um, just the fearlessness to go throw that ball. I know a lot of quarterbacks in that moment, they kind of shrink. Um, not Gage. Um, he's going to go make a play. And that's probably one of his best qualities. Is when his QBR rating was uh, pretty high, too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And he's finally, he's finally embracing those simple throws we asked him to make. Um, and when he does that um, and gets his playmakers the ball, like good things happen. Yeah. Coach, I know you got some good technical questions for Coach. The the drive at the end, um, that, that's what people remember most. But let's talk about the drive before half. Um, they score and, once again, leave leave some time on the clock. And we've shown the last couple of games that, that we can go at that NASCAR pace and, and speed it up. Tell, talk to the guys and, and the folks listening about how important that field goal was there before half and, and what was your mindset going into that drive. Oh, it was huge. You know, in a game like that where it's back and forth and you're thinking the last team who has the ball is going to win, any time you could go and steal just some points, and you've mentioned earlier we have a huge weapon with Cisco. Um, so we knew if we could just get it down there, he could give us a shot to get some points. Um, I was almost more proud of that drive um, than the game-winning drive. Um, it was a pretty we – had, we had one kind of iffy play, but the execution on that two-minute drill, we had, what, 30 seconds left? I think so. Just to be able to march down the field. Um, the last catch that Jay made, to have the awareness to plant and then sprint out of bounds with three seconds left, that's just a heads-up football play. And we rep that, like Coach P said, every Thursday. Um, but to go out there and execute it in the moment, 
Um, it, it's pretty dang special to be able it, to do it that. It really is. Does having Zach on the sideline to come in and kick help with the calls that you can make and give you a chance to maybe take a little more chance because you know once you get in his range, which seems to be increasing – Every week, I know it is his kickoffs. But does that give you a little confidence to take a chance or two here? It it absolutely does. Um, Coach P does a great job communicating with me on the sidelines. He'll let me know, hey, you're in two down territories right here, or hey, we're going to try to take points if we don't get this. And you know, I I have a little more leeway to take shots to the end zone because we know we have a good kicker who can come in and get his points. So, at the end of the day, we got to move on. And, and you win a game, and it's exciting, and everybody's, everybody's you know, emotionally high and all that stuff. But Fayette's going to present some challenges. From the offensive side of the ball, um, what are we going to have to do to uh, be successful Friday night against them? We're going to have to match their physicality. Um, they, I have a lot of respect for um, the brand of football that Fayette Academy plays. Um, they're a little undersized um, up front, but they just have a bunch of stocky, scrappy guys who fly to the football and just play hard-nosed football. Um, This is not a game where we can just roll out and expect to score a lot of points. We're going to have to execute our game plan. Um, We're going to have to do the little things that that we've been doing the past couple weeks um, because they're going to come after us. Um, Like Coach P said, they're going to blitz. They're going to send six, seven guys sometimes, Um, and we're going to have to counter that. We're going to have to know um, our assignments and, and play assignment football. And that forces them into man coverage when they blitz. Absolutely. They don't have people to drop sometimes in the hook zones. Sometimes they can't go four deep. And uh, But we see a tremendous amount of zone because of the speed we've got. You're exactly right. So we're going to try to put them in some binds coverage-wise. Um, if they want to play man, um, we're going to try to disrupt their rules and their assignments. And at the end of the day, our playmakers are going to have to go make plays if they want to stay in man coverage. Got to ask you both about Daniel Green. Sometimes he doesn't get a lot of target. When he does, he catches them and doesn't. But he pulls H backs, and I think y'all don't call him an H back, but really he plays like an NFL tight end that is an H back or something. He pulls just like the guards do, and he makes Absolutely. some pretty vicious blocks sometimes. Daniel does so much dirty work for our team that a lot of people don't notice. Um, a lot of those um, pitches we run. He is the key block on that. He's yep. the one that's arcing around for the corner. And another thing people may not notice, though, those passes that Jay kept on catching, people may wonder, how is, there, how is a receiver like Jay open? Well, it's because you have a 6'6 guy who's drawing so many eyes on the out route, and that clears the way for Jay. If you watch that last two-minute drill we did um, before the half, there's almost three guys running with Daniel because they think, oh, well, surely they're going to throw the ball to the 6'6 guy, and that opens up lanes. Um, and that's something people don't notice. But he does a lot of that where he just draws so many eyeballs because of his size. Um, and it doesn't go in a box score, but he is integral to what we do on offense. And he showed you that over at FACS. Oh, I still think the second one was a touchdown. <laughs> but anyway, absolutely. he catches the ball. He, for a big man, he's got nice soft hands. Now, maybe being a first baseman once upon a time helped with that. I don't know. You're well, the he, expert he's on that. A, he's a pretty good athlete. I, don't, yeah. I won't tell him that. Um, but he's, he's a pretty good athlete for his size. and. Uh, runs well, and um, I, I think he's a guy that before it's all said and done is going to catch a lot of passes for us along with keep doing what he's doing um, in the run game because having a guy that's physical, and that was kind of our question for Daniel this year was are you ready to step up and take on that role and be physical and be an extended uh, extension of our offensive line, and he's done a great job, and he's starting to get some defensive reps there um, at our dog spot, which is huge uh, to give Caleb a rest, but also to put Caleb in the three at the three tech a little bit, which is something that uh, we went too late there, and he was able to, to cause some chaos in there and make some plays. He did. I compare him to a young Ted Hendrick. I'm that old. The mad stork that played for the University of Miami, played for the Oakland Raiders and for the Packers. I'm going to have to take your word for it on that, Coach. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was good. He was all pro a yeah. bunch of times. Daniel just looks like a learning young mad stork. Coach Ryder must remember the mad stork. No, I don't. I I may look old, but I'm not that old. (laughs) You're not that old, no. (laughs) Well, that's a compliment to be called the mad stork. Okay. And uh, he was 6'7", and I think Daniel's only 6'6". Yep. (laughs) He's six five, six six, something like that. Yep. Coach, what else have we have we got? Because we need to drain this man. I want to learn some offensive football from him. Well, um, coach, what is uh, you talked about? Um, we don't have many run plays, and without without giving everything away, what? How are we able to uh, simplify our run game? And what is what is your goal and our goal 
for our running game um, to be successful. Sure, absolutely. We, me and Coach Palmer spent a lot of time in the offseason, and our goal is we want to create an offense that is hard for the defense but very simple for us. Um, and our offense is built on a lot of repetition, and we want our guys playing fast and confident. Um, if our guys are unsure of their responsibilities, if they're unsure of what they're supposed to do, they play slow, and playing slow gets you beat. Uh, we want to play fast. We want to be confident. Uh, and we have, a very, we have a lot of simple concepts that we can run out of a multitude of different formations. And that's our goal. We want to put defenders in conflict. Um, we want to make reads hard. We want to run the same play up front but with multiple guys and multiple motions. So that's really kind of the bread and butter of our offense. Um, you ask our linemen, you know, we really have three base run plays, but we can run those with so many different players out of so many different formations, so many different looks. Um, it looks like there's a lot of chaos going on in the field, but it's actually pretty simple for our guys. Absolutely. Got to ask you this, <clears throat> and I get this question, and one of my buddies just texts me. He's listening tonight, and I'm not going to give him credit for listening, though, other than say he's listening. He wants to know why we never go under center, and uh, I've talked to him before. I can't make him understand that that's the philosophy of a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. You know, old-timers <laughs> like me, oh, my gosh, you don't get under center when you're on the goal line or fourth and one. But you know what, having that running back hit the line with a full head of steam, and there's more reasons than that. Sure. There are some positives to not getting under center on fourth down. So one reason is we don't, we don't rep lots of t under center, and when you get down on the goal line, you want to be as comfortable as possible. Um, and we, w we don't want to do something that we don't spend tons of time and practice on. Um, the other thing I would say is when you take an under center snap and you give to your running back, where is your running back lined up in the eye formation? How deep is he? Oh, he's at least seven. Okay. Sometimes more than that. You know, USC used to put him as deep as nine. Exactly. So when we line up in the shotgun, he's lined up at five. Yeah. So as far as difference, you're not looking at much difference. You know, the running backs still come from the same depth. Um, so I get that question a lot. Um, and I get it. There's different philosophies. I'm, sure. I'm not saying what But you can also fumble, too. The quarterback is so used to taking that snap. Exactly. And seeing it and visualizing the whole field. You're under center, and all it has to do is hit. And if it, that bottom hand exactly. doesn't hold it in there, the other team's first and ten from their exactly. one-yard line hitting and, the other and, way. And I, I, played, I played center in college, Coach, and when you're not used to doing that under center snap yeah. and you got a big 280-pound nose guard lined up across from you, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> you know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, there, like I said, there's different philosophies. That's our philosophy. I'm not opposed to under center, but um, – I think we've been pretty good at what we do on the goal line. Anything you two gentlemen uh, and these guys work together so well, yeah, anything we, we've got to take a time out here in a minute, but closing statements on this segment of the show. Coach Riker, I'll let you uh, close us out, and we appreciate you being here tonight and, and talking some offense with us. Yeah, um, I just want to restate how proud I am. Coach P hit on it earlier. Um, I, my job is very easy with the athletes we have and how confident they're playing. We have six guys, um, skill player-wise, that they feel like they can score the ball every time they touch the ball. Um, and, and they're confident in their roles, they're confident in their assignments. And there was a true belief that every time we touched the ball Friday night, we were going to score. And I think Coach P told the story after Trinity scored. I looked at my line and said, do y'all believe we can do this? And there was not an ounce of doubt in there. I said, yeah, let's go. They looked at me like I was crazy, like I might be doubting. Um, so that was a cool thing to experience, just um, how confident those guys were Friday night. Um, and it's fun to see that in action when you see guys work hard and you get to go out and execute. Absolutely. Coach, we had a team effort the other night, but we are fixing to, after this break, talk to two of the most exciting young men, and they were definitely dominant on the other night, especially uh, the defensive end. Uh, I'm still uh, – Chilton's had a lot of tackles, but – he almost caught his season total, and he was, I think, coming into the with 18 to 20 tackles. And I believe the official stats, correct me if I'm wrong, he had 11 and a half or something like yep. that, didn't he? Yep. Wow, that's impressive. And when we come back, we will have two of the most impressive young men that this show or any other will ever have. We've had a bunch already, two more superstars coming up. We'll take a time out here from the Hub City Deli. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. 
the salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. Oh, we are back. Not only are there great sandwiches and soup here at Hub City Deli, you've got the Jackson Christian Eagles show here with a great set of guests, and we've got one. And I, I'll go ahead and tell you, I asked him something off air if he was a chess player because this young man looks like very cagey with his mind, can make the moves and stuff. And he did make the moves the other night. What a night. Coach, it is all yours because I'm going to sit here and be excited about having Chilton Smith on. Yes, sir. Chilton, thank you for being with us tonight. Um, we are, we're glad you're here, glad to be able to talk with you, spend some time with you. Um, one of our seniors, um, defensive lineman, a career high 11 total tackles versus TCA. Coach, the best thing about that is when we were talking while he was eating, I said, did you know you had 11 tackles? He said, no, sir, I, I didn't know. And that's not what he's worried about. He is worried about doing his job and, and helping our team win. And we talked about how, you know, we challenged those guys uh, going into the week of, of – you know, really getting back to that physical brand of football. And Chilton did a great job uh, for us. And, and Chill, talk about uh, Friday night. Talk about the emotions of the game and um, how you were able to execute and, and, and get 11, be in on 11 tackles. Um, Friday night, the first quarter kind of started slow because I wasn't really sure what they were doing at first. And then I started to catch on, and it just made a lot of sense. And I filled my gaps and got most of my tackles that way. Yeah, so th what you mean they were – so offensively they were doing some stuff that was a little bit different than maybe we saw on film, um, and, and we had to make some adjustments. How were you able – Was does, do those adjustments come from uh, seeing it as a defense or, or coming to the sideline and talking? What kind of – what goes into that, making those changes on the fly during a game? Um, it was a little bit of both. At the sideline, Coach Phillips was talking to me on how I needed to change, like, what I was doing, and then – I was just learning and catching on what they were doing on offense. I uh, changed to it. So last year, um, all-region guy for us, and we talked a little bit about this, got banged up in the spring game. Um, talk about the, the rehab you had to go through and, and kind of getting back uh, to 100% for, before the season started. Um, it was – was it exam week? I think so, the spring game, yeah, against uh, Westview. I dislocated my kneecap. And I'm going to be honest, I thought I was out for the rest of football. But they said I would have six to eight weeks of PT, and I just put the work in and kept grinding. There you go. Coach? He is. What an outstanding young man. And um, now that's not going to keep you from throwing the shot, the kneecap injury, is it? No, sir. He is, he is great. I had to bring that up that he throws the shot. I'm going to ask you a couple of – some of them may be football questions, but first of all, and it's important, in our school – takes care and they build young men and young ladies into young adults and um, what a great thing what's your favorite bible verse um mine would probably be matthew five fourteen. it is you're the light of the world i think that's telling us that we need to go and help other people when they like need it the most. And he lives that verse too. I know. I know that much. I've done a little research, and, and I've got somebody making faces at me from behind, and I'm not like the great Leonard Fielding. Y'all don't know. I will smile. But it's now. What about school? I know you're a good academician, but in your case, I'm almost going to say, how many favorite classes do you have? Because I know you're good at academics, and who are some of the teachers you like? And if you want to just do one teacher and one subject, that's fine. But this young man, he's kind of special about stuff. You might be surprised by this, Coach Bull, but my favorite teacher is probably Mr. Morris. He just makes the class so fun while he's teaching us, and we're learning so much. And he's just overall a really good teacher. Yeah, he, he really is. Your favorite sports moment because I know you have a lot of them in the classroom and just camaraderie with all the students. Favorite sports moment since you've been at Jackson Christian? You're probably not going to be surprised, but it was when Alden Holland kicked that game-winning field goal against USA. I listen to that once a day. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. Because, one, I'm making the call, and, two, Alden comes out there. We fought so hard. We fought all kinds of adversity. And just like the TCA game this year, we got there – line that thing up the snap was good the hole was good Alden's head stayed down followed through 
victory, Jackson Christian School. That is a great moment. Besides class and football, what do you like best at Jackson Christian? I just like the environment. I've heard other people talk about different schools, and it's nothing compared to JCS. You won't meet anyone that's better than people at JCS. Yeah. Got to hit the food question real quick. Favorite school food, favorite food out when you're out with just the guys or by yourself? Um, For school food, it would probably have to be Salisbury steak. I, I like that, too. I've been hey, trying to get somebody know, to buy me lunch there. Do you know who holds the record for Salisbury steaks eaten in the cafeteria? It's a trivia question for you. Do you know who holds that record? Patrick Wilson. How many did he eat? Probably like six, maybe. Well, wow. there's a certain football coach that, that took down uh, about five of those things a couple weeks ago. So, I'll let you guess who that was. And it wasn't me or Coach Riker or Coach Phillips or any of those guys. It, it was uh, – I'll let you guess who that – who took down five chills. So, go ahead. Keep going, Coach. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh, man. Do you know Chilton? Uh, Coach P. There you go. He got it. <laughs> He's a little skinny fellow. <laughs> I'm just telling. I'm just telling you. I witnessed it. it. It was a, it was a monumental feat there in the cafeteria. Chilton, go your senior. And if you want to talk about some fun moments and coming to senior year, what's Chilton Smith do after Jackson Christian School? Um, I'm most likely going to go to school for welding, and then hopefully work at that company that Ford's bringing at Brownsville. That's or, smart with the Blue Oval coming. And you might even hook something with them. Yes, sir. And uh, second options, if, you know, because sometimes I changed options. I was going to be a lawyer and came up with this great idea to be a coach and a teacher. <laughs> um, I would probably have to say I would probably work with my stepdad. He's a meter technician. Wow. That's, that's a very important job. And I, I know a little bit about that from an uncle, but. Uh, what uh, again? Jackson Christian has been a good thing. Do you love the camaraderie? Y'all are family. That's one thing. It's not. Easy. I know they teach it, preach it, work with y'all on being family. But it's obvious that y'all have got it together. That's fun, isn't it? Yes, sir. It is. Coach, you got a couple other questions. Uh, for, I've got some, but uh, we need to get a little more technical because I enjoyed meeting this young man up close and personal. Yeah, th- this isn't necessarily technical, chill, but. Um, Let's go back to Friday night, and TCA uh, did a great job, come down and score, and, and we're down um, with about 50 seconds left. What what was going through uh, your mind on the sideline? I was just praying that we were going to make a big play and either get into field goal range or score a touchdown. Did you have a lot of faith in, in our offense to, to take it down and score? Yes, sir, definitely. Our offense is one of a kind. And, and I, I could kind of look around on the sideline and – uh, been doing this for for almost ten years, and you kind of get deflated. But we didn't really feel that on our sideline. It, it felt like that um, there was a lot of confidence. There was a lot of confidence in our offensive line. There was a lot of confidence in our skill guys and guys like Jay and Cam. And they don't need a lot of space. They can they can make a big play. What do you think about that? You're exactly right. But luckily we had Lance, and he made that perfect catch and uh, won it for us. Absolutely, coach. Isn't that one for great credit? It's your turn. Say anything you want to to parents. Say hi to mom, dad, etc. It's your turn. Say anything you want to about football. The mic is all yours. I just want to say to everyone at JSS, thank you for everything you've done to me over the past, actually, several years since I've been here. Great place to be, isn't it? Yes, sir, and it we've is. Had fun. I'm going to miss you when you graduate because I've watched you in the performance Friday night. I will not forget that. It was a great one, and you don't either. Go back and watch yourself a couple of times. You'll enjoy watching. Oh, you were everywhere. Second half, you got stronger as it went on. And I'm serious, Chilton was everywhere because David Wade and I mentioned that, uh, and we should have been watching everybody closer, but uh, sometimes even broadcasters. I brought Coach uh, Darby a bottle of Pepto-Bismol tonight. (laughs) Anyway, folks, that's the kind of quality kids we have, quality coaches. And we are going to have to take a timeout. 
and then the man that uses Gorilla Glue on his hands, and I t- uh, he doesn't know I say that. He doesn't really. He just has good soft hands. Lance Rowland will be with us. We're at Hub City Deli. You still got time to get you a quick sandwich out of here. My wife ate, and I don't think she ordered me anything, but that's okay. And I'm going to say hi to my cat, Gizmo. Uh, he's probably not listening now because we forgot to turn the uh, Facebook page on so he can see. Gizmo <laughs> watches this show every week. Let's go. take that time out. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back after a 49-42 win over TCA, and it was a great thing. We moved to 18-9, and and everybody contributed. I know this young man will. But the man that I uh, jokingly say has Gorilla Glue on his hands because he don't drop them when he puts those hands on three. He's had more than three catches, folks, but three of his have been under duress in corners of end zone or right at the edge of at Columbia Academy. Uh, He not only caught a pass with great coverage on him, he made that guy faked him out of his jock strap, if we can say that, and got himself into the end zone. And you can still go back and watch that great catch. But the one the other night, very important on the season because we have to keep winning to get second place. And, Coach, again, I'm going to turn it over to you for the one and only Lance Rowland. Yes, sir, Lance. Thanks for being with us tonight. Sir. We'll get to the, the game-winning touchdown, but I, I want to go back to one. Um, we threw you a screen, and you were able to slip a tackle. And you went, you took it, I think, uh, 20-something yards and tripped up, um, lost your balance and fell short of the end zone. And I remember you coming off the field and how frustrated we were and how bad you wanted to score that touchdown. And, and folks just picking you up saying, it's okay, you'll get the next one. You're going you're gonna to put one in the end zone. So let's, let's go, let's fast forward um, to 50-something seconds left. And I just asked Chilton this question. What were you feeling on the sideline? after Trinity scored to take the lead there late in the game? Just high emotions. I really – we just had to make something happen. And so we, we got to make something happen, and we don't have a whole lot of time. Run the ball a couple times. Uh, Cam has 11 or 12-yard runs. Uh, throw a pass to Jay. Then, then we take a timeout um, and, and decide um, – we're going to take a shot at the end zone. Um, and, and we called the play, and, you know, we thought schematically we thought we were going to have a matchup. Um, it got covered up, and, and Gage progressed to you. And, and take us through that play and, and what happened um, pre-snap and, and during that play. Just did what I was coached to do. And I knew everybody else had my back, and I just had to own my 111th. Amen. So, ball's in the air. What, what were you thinking, or where are you thinking? Was it just I got to go up and make a play? It's just really all or nothing. Coach? Hey, total focus, right, on, on that. And Lance is very focused. He is right now, and, and he's going to give you some good answers on some things. Lance got to ask about the football thing. What have you done over these years to prepare? You've had a couple of injuries that kind of set you back a little bit, and you were due to start some of this. But what do you do? to get ready for football games and catch passes like you do? It's really just all my mindset, just make sure i am got my emotions in check and ready to give it everything I have. Yeah, I know a ton of you, and you might call their names. Y'all went to the University of Alabama camp, and I talked to a, to a GA down there. Uh, he, I happened to have met him, knew where he played high school football and then his progression through college. He said that you had a great camp down there. Did did you really get that much out of it? And what about the other guys too? It was awesome. I learned stuff I still use today from that it, camp. It was really well. He complimented you. He said all of y'all did well, and he appreciated y'all. How's it feel to play with? Uh, he, and Blake's uh, Blake's gonna get me. How did it feel to play with a little brother on the same team? 
It's something for sure. <laughs> hey, uh, do you have to ever give him some little nuggets? Because he is younger, and he plays more defensive back than he does uh, wide receiver. But do you give him a few tips? Because you're the experienced guy. Um, he pretty much does it on his own, honestly. Which He's one's faster, you or Blake? Me. <laughs> wow, there. You know, there's some people. Because Blake's pretty quick, but not as quick. Who's quicker? Are you sure about that? Positive. Oh, okay. Y you, Mama, or Blake? <laughs> Your mother can run. She was a point guard at Wayne County. You don't know which one's quicker then. You're probably quicker than both of them. Okay. Now, you got a sister I thought around here somewhere. I thought I saw her a while ago. Yeah, she's over there. She's over there. Anyway, let's get back to some football things. Now, where do you want to go to school? I know you've looked at several, but you're big into occupational uh, safety, right? Yes, sir. Any chance it might be Murray State, one of the schools you're looking at? That's definitely on top of my list. Now, I don't know if they've recruited you or not. That's irrelevant. But would you consider playing another sport up there? Possibly, if I got the opportunity. Could it be track or football? I'd like it to be football. You'd like it to be football. And, uh, you know, it, um, great occupational safety. You're getting a good education at Jackson Christian for that. Okay, yes, let, we need to go into some up close and personal questions, and I've got a couple of others about other sports and some things like that. What's your favorite Bible verse? Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, you can, and you do them too. He lives this every day. Young Life, you are part of a very good basketball team made up of several schools. And, uh, and Lance, let me tell you this, he could play – high school basketball, et cetera, like that. But he's busy, he studies, and uh, that Young Life team's pretty good, though, isn't it? Yes, sir, it's it, a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Okay, uh, I'm going to get shot now, and I'm seeing I'm getting a glaring eye from somebody over there, not you. You were at the UT Alabama game. Is there any chance you were hanging around that goal post after the game was over at any time? I saw it. They were carrying it right beside my head. Uh, and you protected Mama from getting the goalposts to fall on the right. That was crazy. It, it was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, we can do that, too. Uh, other night was just a taste of what it feels like to have an exciting win. You know, we could go all the way. Would you like to go all the way to the finals of the state playoff? That's the goal in mine. That is the goal in mine. Okay, favorite food at school? At school? At school. We'll get the other one. I mean, you can do both foods, school first and out in public second. It would definitely be Miss Angie's ham and cheese sliders. Wow, I like sliders too. What about out away from there? Away from there, my go-to is usually either Chick-fil-A or Zaxby's. Now, you know we've not had a pizza man no, no. all year for yeah. their favorite food. What about classes? I know you study hard, you work hard. What's your favorite class and teacher? My favorite class, um, I would say, is my first block facts class with uh, Miss Christian Moore. Very good. You can't beat that. And uh, you're going to run track this spring? or Because uh, he's also a pretty good baseball player, too. I'm putting uh, the press. Because Coach Bullard coaches baseball, too, with Coach McLean. There's a lot of options. Um, a lot of options. Smart man right here, Coach. Coach, you got a couple more questions before Gary blows the whistle on us? Yeah, Lance, just uh, season's winding down. One more game and then, and then the playoffs. We obviously focused on, on Fayette Academy. What, what are some goals that, that you have for this game um, and then going, getting ready going into the playoffs for yourself and for our team? Well, other than myself, just getting the job done and securing our uh, spot. What about team goals? What, what did – what, I know we, we talk about all the time taking it one, one game, one practice, one week at a time. Um, and and we're, what do you feel like is uh, the ceiling for our team? All the way. I really, think, I really think we can make it big this year if we want to. Just got to keep working? Yes, sir. Good. Coach? We need to let Lance give his final statement. Lance, it's your turn to say anything to the fans, the students, uh, family, whatever – uh, about Jackson Christian or just about Lance Roll? Um, I don't really have much to say. Just Well, I know one thing he usually says is go Eagles because he believes in the team concept. But And uh, anybody you want to thank for influence in your life? 
all the coaches. Um, the student session is great. Um, all the fans come out and watch us play. And uh, we've uh, kind of got in on your future plans, but uh, we know you're going to do something big and all that. You've had a good time at Jackson Christian as a student, haven't you? Yes, sir. I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. That sounds like win. That is a winner, uh, folks. Uh, Lance Rowland caught the touchdown, but he's more than one touchdown. He's done a lot of things, and sometimes some of the things that he does in his own life off the sports field are great. We're going to take a quick timeout. Coach Buller and I are going to come back and wrap this up. we got all kinds of information. You need to be at Jackson Christian or be square Friday night. We're coming to you from Hub City Deli. Let's take that time out. Hub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian. We are back, and we've got all kinds of sandwiches. They also have breakfast here at Hub City Deli. You are listening to the Jackson Christian Eagle Show. You can find it every week on Facebook. Coach, big week. Important game. Yep. We don't need to lose, don't want to lose, and uh, we've got all kinds of activities, and I'm going to let you lead it off with what's happening at Jackson Christian and Fayette Academy. Yeah, Friday is a big game, um, and, and they're a two-loss team. That's done a great job this year competing in our region. Uh, Coach Palmer hit on the fact that, you know, they're going to do a ton of stuff offensively, uh, a lot of formations, a lot of things that, that we have to be prepared for. Um, and Coach Hodum is, is a good coach and been around the football, the game of football for a long time. Uh, we're excited. Um, some things going on at the game. Uh, my daughter, uh, along with a, a lot of other uh, of our younger Little Eagle, Eagles cheerleaders, will be performing at halftime. Also, uh, we'll have flag football recognition, um, and we're hoping that those kids will be able to run out ahead of the team and, and kind of get to run out on the field on Friday night. Um, we're excited about that. Hopefully my son will be um, in the middle of that as well. And then it'll be senior night um, for football, for cheer, golf, band, and cross country. Um, and so it's going to be a, a really big night, hopefully a really big crowd. Um, hopefully we'll get a playoff atmosphere um, and, and a, a good crowd uh, for our guys on Friday. Oh, absolutely, all kinds of activities. But let's include everybody. This show is – there's a lot about football, but we promote a great school. We're going to have the band there. Who, their seniors are going to be there, the cross-country seniors, the cheerleader seniors, the football seniors. And uh, soccer will also uh, have a senior night, I believe, right? They, they had theirs. They both um, had And theirs. that's okay. why we wanted to mention they had their senior night. Uh, we didn't want to leave them out. They are one of the, the fall sports that does their own. Um, but nobody's there to watch golf. Uh, so, they, you know, we, it's not like you can go and, and watch and have a big crowd and, have, and celebrate those seniors. So we use football to do that, and we're, we're honored to have those guys. They had a great year. Yeah. Um, had and a tremendous year. We've got year. some guys that got scholarships. Yep. And I know that there is a school looking at uh, Dylan, uh, Lance's brother. Yeah. And uh, some great things happening there. Uh, our band. I, their band puts in a ton of yeah. time in our cross country. Um, and so those aren't always yeah. – opportunities where you get a crowd and you get an opportunity to do that and so we we're uh, honored to have those other sports along with us on friday now we didn't mention the volleyball team because they're all coming back next that's year that's right and uh, we'll get them next year but let's don't rush the girls out that's and, right and you never know we may have the great maggie richardson uh, actually working for worthy road studios and those ceremonies if i'm not mistaken are not only going to be shown but taped and put up on YouTube also, okay. if you want to go back or if your relatives miss it. You don't want to miss the game. Our pregame starts at 6.30. It may start a little early, and we'll try to appraise you of that because of the festivities. Mm -hmm. The kickoff is at 7 o'clock, and like I said, there are people just like tonight. There were 10 cell phones in here watching and listening to this show, even though they are in range, and we want you to do that. 
We are 99 all time against Fayette Academy. We have won the last two. They are dangerous. Coach Hodum knows our team well because he played at USJ. He coached at TCA. He coached down at Chester County, and we've had some games with Chester County, and uh, he's a very good coach. We've got to execute a couple of quick keys to victory for us Friday night. A big thing for us defensively, and, of course, this is where I spend a lot of my time, um, our front four has has to win their battles, and we have to we have to try to make Fayette be a one dimensional football team. Um, and, and I don't know that you'll shut down their run, but we need to slow down their run and, and make it hard on them, and and force them into some long yardage situations where uh, we can kind of pin our ears back and come get the quarterback. And so, just b- recognizing formations, being disciplined, uh, knowing your game plan, knowing your assignments, and and really doing that. Um, defensively is going to be a key. And then offensively, uh, just like we do every week, it's it's getting guys, getting our run game going, um, establishing that, kind of grinding out some drives, making them, wearing those guys down, getting the ball to guys in space, uh, using all those playmakers that Coach Riker talked about, and taking care of the football. Um, and, and just doing what we have done for the past nine or ten weeks, keep doing it. we got to play Jackson Christian football with a couple of adjustments. I want to mention Easton Jones. He yep. came in and played the one high, what I call the one high safety spot several times and gave us some good minutes the other night. Yeah, we we were uh, looking for some help there in the run game, and Easton just we his his strength is coming downhill and hitting, um, and you know they they took advantage of that a little bit of uh, being aggressive on on some pass plays there, but him coming up and and hit and meeting number seven in the hole, and and really helping out our defense having that guy. Um, come down and, and just fill the holes and safeties are going to be unblocked most of the time and so you know he he did a tremendous job he's been hurt we've been we've been anxious to get him back in the lineup um, and, and we are finally he's finally healthy he's finally feeling good and hopefully there's a, a lot of big things coming from Easton uh, Friday night and going into the playoffs. Coach you got anything to say in the last minute of the program that fans need to know? It was a uh, they supported us. They supported us Friday. They supported us um, even when we were down, our backs were against the wall. And it was awesome to uh, for Lance to catch that ball and, and to turn around and see those fans excited, our young kids excited. Um, and we are, we're we're looking forward to another opportunity. Hopefully they'll be out tailgating Friday. I, I love that. Um, kind of started this year at our home games. And would love to see some tailgating going on. But just want to see the end zone full, the stands full for a night of, of – football, but recognition for our seniors, our, our little cheerleaders, our flag football. It should be a really good night, hopefully, for the Jackson Christian community. Absolutely. We want you to be there. We want you to tune into our Facebook page and watch the game there. But you can bring the phone. It works, folks. These people here tonight will tell you it works. And you can watch the game here, the comments. Dave Wade is delightful with his color comments. He knows the rules better than a lot of our officials do because he used to be an official. That's right. And he was the head of a crew. Looking forward to a great week of football. We want to thank our main man over there. He, uh, You'd think he had eight hands the way he handles things. Gary Lockhart does such a great job. And we'll remind you that this is a copyrighted broadcast of Worthy Road Studios, executive producer Paul Schultz, Gary Lockhart, producer, director, cameraman, and all-around good guy over there. I'm Coach Joe Holloway, Brian Bullard with me. And, folks, we'll remind you that any rebroadcast, retransmission, or further use of this contest without the express written consent of Worthy Roads is prohibited. It's time to say thanks for your time this time till next time. Good night, all. Pub City Deli is honored to sponsor Jackson Christian Athletics. Gourmet chef Peter Thomas invites you in for a totally new experience in craft sandwiches, wraps, and salads. The homemade hoagies are baked fresh. A big favorite is Pete's brisket hoagie with brisket, smoked Texas style. The Hub City Burger is a Jackson favorite. The salads are always fresh and unique. Hub City Deli is open for breakfast as well. Located on Pleasant Plains Extended, just down the road from Jackson Christian.